Guests on this program are those of the commenters alone. They do not represent the views or opinions of Valley News Live, our parent company, or our advertisers. And welcome back to 6.30 POV. Chris and I touching on the Benghazi situation, the resignation of uh, CIA Director Petraeus. We're going to continue with that. I guess the next question to you is, uh, according to the story we saw earlier on in the show, that private information, classified information, probably wasn't shared with this woman. Do you think it was? Well, there was a piece, a, a clip from her earlier speaking, I believe, at University of Denver, maybe University, University of Colorado, where she had essentially sort of leaked some info, basically saying to the audience, I don't know if you know this, and I don't have verbatim what she said, but very, very much could be conceived as classified information. So you've got to believe, when someone's doing an intense biography on you, some things are going to get shared that probably don't need to be leaked to the public. She went to West Point. She understands the importance of that. She knows how to ask those kind of questions. And obviously, they built a, built a very, very close relationship. So I'm sure during, I don't mean the best pun intended, but during Pillow Talk, I'm sure some things got said that probably shouldn't have been said. Now, there may have been things on her computer as well. Apparently, there was some unclass or classified information that was found on her, her computer. It, it says, you know, national security probably wasn't compromised, but does that concern you as an American citizen that, you know, this, this lady has classified information on her computer and probably shouldn't have? Clearly. I mean, she's looking like a fatal attraction woman right now. And, you've, again, you've got to believe, went to West Point, studied at Harvard from a leadership program. This is a very smart woman. You cannot tell me that there wasn't some sort of alternative motive to what she was up to with General Petraeus. Again, during Pillow Talk and those moments, utilizing those moments to obviously get information from him that she knew she could use down the road, obviously, as blackmail. Was it done purposely? I guess time will tell. Her dad came out today at Bismarck and said, look, there is a lot more to the story than just the affair. The truth will be uncovered at some point in time, and you'll find out exactly what that is. So I don't know. Is there other security breaches? And again, is Petraeus going to be the fall guy in this administration to murky the waters for Benghazi so Obama can wipe his hands and go, hey, I didn't have anything to do with that? You just mentioned President Obama. How much of this did he know about ahead of time and when? They're saying now, obviously, to us, the layman, after the election. Yeah. First of all, if he's the commander-in-chief and he didn't know about this till after the election, that's even more scary. Yeah. At least you want to hope, you know what, maybe this guy knew about it and was just trying to save his own political tail from the election. But for him not to know is even more freakish to me. And now you've got Hillary Clinton saying, I'm traveling. I'm not really sure I'm going to testify in this Benghazi deal. That's I got more important there, too. Yeah, I mean, we lost four American lives. Yep. Just after Veterans line. Day, yeah. and she's going to say, you know what, i got to go travel. That's crazy. All right. What do you make of it? it it's just a mess. You know, it, the thing is, will we ever know what the president knew and when he knew it? And who else knew it? What, what did Petraeus know? And the fact that he's going through this scandal, how much does that, does he become the fall guy? Does he be the one that, you know, they blame everything on? so that the president can... Well, now, as is, is you just talked about, you know, you start to denigrate someone's character, it becomes the easy thing to do. They're obviously trying to pull this third woman into it, who Broadwell had emailed, but now it's becoming clear that uh, the other woman down in Tampa, Florida, and her husband were just friends of the Petraeus, so there was no extramarital affair going on there. But the more you can obviously vilify someone's character, the easy to say, hey, this is the guy that had the info. He knew what was going on in Benghazi and didn't act, not me as the commander-in-chief, not once. And maybe he has, and I haven't heard it. But not once, as President Barack Obama said, the buck stops here. And as the commander-in-chief, we all know that's the case. But even Hillary, some people were saying, was going to be the fall woman. Because at one point, she said, the buck stops here as Secretary of State. This guy needs to stand up, tell the American public the truth. All of us have been asking him to, look, sit in the Oval Office and speak to us as the American public. And he has yet to do that. And that's concerning. All right, we've got a phone call that we got last week. We're going to start on this conversation. You received a phone call last week. We were talking about gun control. Talk to us a little bit about the subject or the substance, I should say, of that phone call. So, again, last week you asked, hey, you know what, now that he's been elected, what can we anticipate as some changes that are going to take place? We all know there's going to be a lot more regulations. Obamacare is going to start to sink its teeth into us. But one of the things I mentioned last week was already President Barack Obama administration was starting to work with the U.N. on what's called the United Nations Small Arm and Light Weapons Treaty. The president of the NRA and the NRA as a whole is vehemently against this. People are already starting to question their Second Amendment rights. And I want to talk more about this and get some details 
just to create some clarity, because I'm not saying that Barack Obama is going to go out there and take all your guns away tomorrow. No. But this is a step in that direction, and we'll talk more about that when we come back. All right, stay with us. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome back to 630 POV mm -hmm. Hotbox Part 2 continues. And we're talking about gun control, and uh, again, refresh us on this uh, phone conversation. And So essentially, I saw a headline last week. I mentioned about how President Barack Obama, I mean, within 48 hours after the election, started to make a deal with the U.N. It's a vote that was going to take up back in 2009. Hillary Clinton sort of said, hey, I think we support this thing, and then essentially backed off when the election started to heat up. Well, again, it's called the United Nations Small Arms and Light Weapons Treaty. Essentially, it's to stop illicit trade of arms across the globe, which makes sense. You think, okay, that's a good thing. But again, if you read our Second Amendment, it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That doesn't mean there's any room for infringement there. Yep. And again, if you go back to what happened in Fast and Furious, why are we putting guns then in the arms of obviously the drug cartel in Mexico? In my opinion, and this is just an opinion, I think a lot of people share this, that was part of the movement towards this U.N. treaty to say, see, we got to stop the illicit trade of arms because obviously if you see what's happening across the borders, now it's killing people in these Mexican drug cartels, obviously thinking they're not going to get caught planting these guns in people's hands. So, again, I'm not saying that Obama is going to come and rip the Second Amendment out of America tomorrow, but it's a step Next in week? that direction. If, do you know much about a Year? thing called Agenda 21? No. Agenda 21 is something that's all about sustainable development that people were freaking out with back in the time as well. Bill Clinton passed an executive order on that where it's very prohibitive from a standpoint here about farming and ag, obviously up and down the heartland. So it still has to pass through the Congress and get ratified if you're going to wreck, obviously, or, or transform the Second Amendment. My point is Barack Obama has been on record saying he's not a fan of, obviously, Americans having arms. Is this something he's going to go after? The NRA believes so, and a lot of other, obviously, gun right organizations are freaked out. I don't know if you saw gun sales as of November 8th, but a lot of people have already sold yeah. out of handguns. Yeah, because people are gathering them up, buying them now, <laughs> just in case. Now, what, what do you think the odds are of getting this passed? That it does well, there's get already ratified. a bunch of companies. They're not going to pass it in the search to, again, blow out the Second Amendment. But this treaty in of itself, it's going to come up again in March. It will get passed. There's right now 150 countries that are on board. The only one that isn't is probably Russia, because I think they're second, obviously, illicit trading of arms. But China's on board, Germany, United Kingdom, all these. But the thing you want to do some homework on, again, it's called the ATT, or the United Nations Small Arms and Light Weapons Treaty, is you read what it actually says, even on our government website, it's not good. Essentially, they want to start talking about combat support equipment, light weapons, small arms, and at some point, they're going to start to make it cost prohibitive for you and I to go out and buy ammunition, which, again, it's not a way to go out there and make guns illegal, but if you can't afford ammunition, your guns don't do you much good. True. All right, switching gears here a little bit. We had this in the beginning of the show. 19 states, citizens in 19 states, have filed petitions to secede from the United States. Your thoughts on that? North Dakota should do it. <laughs> I mean, when you look at North Dakota, you go, we got ag, we got energy, we got bases in Grand Forks yeah. and Minot. Do we really need the other 49 <laughs> Yeah, we, I mean, that, that's the thing, though. I mean, here, here's the thing. We're, we're trying to make, I mean, the, the country right now is so divided. Is this not the last thing we need right now is people saying, hey, let's just split? Look, people are going to think I'm crazy, but if you read a book called The Fourth Turning, you do your, uh, your due diligence on history. We go through these 80 to 100-year periods where every single 80 to 100 years we either have, uh, you know, a civil war, a World War II, uh, something to that effect. Obviously, the Revolutionary War. I've said for quite some time now, you go out another four to six years from now, something not good is going to happen. I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know if it's a civil war or what, but clearly when you see two general elections in a row where it's at 52-48, 50-49, as you just mentioned, there is a definite split happening. What that's going to lead to, I don't know, but if we don't get this fiscal cliff taken care of over the next you know, 50 days, whatever it is, bad things are going to happen. And Here's a shameless plug. We got Senator Hoven coming up Wednesday night live from D.C. to talk about this fiscal cliff. But in terms of this, these people filing for secession, which, you know, the president has to sign off on it. He's not going to do it. Yeah. But is it not the fact that, that folks are trying to do this? Is it not counterproductive? You know, the country is already divided. Does this not make the rift even wider? Well, I mean, it, what was it, 19, you said, that people had filed? States. But those are simply people that are filing. I mean, Correct. a guy from North Dakota filed to have New York so. secede. So... Yeah. Are they going to gather enough signatures to have any weight to it? Probably not. It's just something that people are saying, look, I'm sick and tired of the federal government. Things got to change. Is it going to get any tread? 
I doubt it. All right, we've got a little bit more coming up after the break. It's more me and more of this guy. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.